There's only so much that more experienced people know because not everyone is able to empathise as perfectly with young people as young people are. There's that immediate connection which allows for development of change that is very specific for the groups that are targeted. So it means that with young commissioners being implemented in say a different council, it allows for change that will actually be effective and not just sort of temporary. Welcome back to the webinar series. If you've not watched part one, please do so before watching part two. The webinar series is split over two series and covers how to plan, do, analyse and review the Young Commissioner model to get the most out of having Young Commissioners. The Young Commissioners model provides a tested methodology to meaningfully involve young people in the work of the public sector, co-designing and producing services and pathways that will enable young people to become active and engaged citizens. Young people have a right to be involved in services they use and it makes sense legally, morally, politically and economically. Young people also play a role throughout the commissioning cycle if we are taken seriously, trained and supported. You can find out more information about the Young Commissioners model through the How To Guide and ECPD app listed at the end of the film. We must take the time to review the principles of test and learn at the core of this model. This enables the model to be tailored to a format that best suits both your organisation and the Young Commissioners. Firstly, offer refresher training when needed. Adopt a learn by doing approach to ensure that Young Commissioners feel well informed and confident about your organisation and the work streams they are involved in. I think it's really important to have um, a strong training offer for the young people. It's about developing confidence in one thing but also they need to do specific skills on identifying what would work or what wouldn't work, rating services um, that might be commissioned but it needs to be done in a way that's kind of young person friendly, bite sized and at times and venues that suit them as well. So it could be evenings, weekends, over school holidays, college holidays. We developed a system, a service if you like, that was part of the commissioning role which was completely led, completely developed by children and young people. We acted as only the support mechanism to it. The young people themselves developed the system and the young commissioners themselves would look at bids, literally bids from um, prospective providers um, and on a monthly basis they'd meet, discuss, develop and deliver on the bids. They would be the complete decision making part of those thousands of pounds that would be allocated to those services generally. Local authorities especially the commissioning teams, are starting to see the benefits of re-engaging with young people as commissioners and as quality assurance officers as an example. Because again, the, the new dynamic that that brings. My three tips to anyone who's actually considering to take on a youth commissioner would be, A, would be training, because training is the key thing that you know, helps to build up the confidence. Um, if they didn't have any experience previously, I mean, you can, get a previous, maybe a youth commissioner coming in, you know, speaking to them, just guiding them. Secondly, the benefit of having young people on board is that they offer a different perspective, so ensure that time and space is allotted to hear the perspectives and understand the priorities of young people to enable innovation and transformation. I think it gives new ideas from the young people. Being younger, they've come with a, with a blank page, I think often with adults or professionals, they will have set ideas of what, what we expect from other services, whereas young people, they come with a, with a completely blank page or with new ideas. I think involving them in the services they use is obviously a positive because they know what they want and the skills that they get from that, I think can be useful in later life so the young people themselves develop confidence but also um, employability skills which could be useful. For young people in Dudley, um, there have been a number of council cuts that may have cut down on services for youth work and youth activities within the borough. What we are hoping is that this project will encourage young people to take part in other types of activities that support their borough, that will support young people who will be coming up, turning teenagers, living in Dudley as an adult, going through all services. So we want to ensure that those services meet the needs of everybody going forward and a young person can have a very good impact on activities and services for older people 
just because they're young doesn't mean that they aren't aware of what's needed. The voice of the child is one of the most important things that we can listen to, that we can access. Without their voice, then we can't provide services that meet their needs. The way that they articulate themselves and the way that they've come together and supported with projects has been really useful. It means that we've been able to hear what they've said and to put some of that into practice. We must consider the sustainability of the model. Do not go through all this trouble for it to be a one-off episode. We must be forward-thinking right from the initial planning stage, considering how your organisation will sustain the Young Commissioner role at the very start. It is too valuable to lose. There were challenges with sustainability and embedding the role into the organisation, partially due to finances, but I think mostly due to the lack of buy-in from the cross-organisational partnership working. So while you had one organisation who was really on board and willing to do it, you didn't necessarily have that same willingness from their counterpart who had an equal role in delivering. I think it's recognising that with young people they have busy lives, what might be good for them one year may not be two years later or a year later, so it's ensuring that you've always got a constant replacement, so it's about keeping that model alive. But I think in terms of sustainability, it is about ensuring that there's an ongoing programme of training, that there is ongoing opportunities and that there is ongoing recruitment um, to make sure, and to make sure that young people are, are skilled and equipped, and then hopefully it goes in a rotation so that once those young people have gone through that process, they're then going to be in a position to share that information and possibly be involved in the training of other young people. And often, you know, young people are looking for opportunities to do voluntary work and get involved in things. And so potentially that would be a really good way of, get, of keeping things, you know, sustained. Um, and also it's about the ongoing commitment to making sure that that happens. This is not a, a one-off, this could be integrated and could be quite a fluid process. So if we bought into it at the right levels, if we had the infrastructure correct from the outset, that this could be going on for years, that we wouldn't have to get additional resource into uh, for it to uh, continue once I'd moved from, away from it. The initial challenge for ourselves was that we lowered our age range from the new MCCG model. We wanted to make sure it was more fluid and that we allowed our existing participation structures to allow young people to step up if they wish to develop their skills and experiences into the young commissioners. That didn't always work. We found that the understanding of the subject area, the delivery of the subject area, it had to be varied in order to accommodate the, the age group that we were engaging with. Some of the challenges to working with um, young people as commissioners isn't necessarily the young people themselves. It's to do with structure and a council way of working. It's encouraging people that children have a voice, that their voice should be heard and that what they say is important. We obviously know that children are very important within society. We want them to be able to shape that for their future. You must ensure that the young commissioners are matched to activities that they are interested in doing, as well as activities that will stretch us. They develop new life skills, so these are skills which are transferable to other areas, increase confidence. Our young people are often those who are most disengaged from services, they're marginalised within society so it enables them to be able to express their views alongside health professionals and their, their views count. Because their, their role is to work with the health professionals, they're actually able to see the changes and the input that they're having so it's not simply consultation where they're asked their views and then the professionals go away and either act on those or not, they actually are able to see it see it through. For Young Commissioners, the biggest pluses are like the new experiences and the new opportunities to develop my skills such as public speaking, time management and product management etc. Whereas with the sort of difficulties it's coming out of my shell sort of trying new things and as good of an option as that is it's hard to get into at first but it's definitely rewarding in the end. The project that we did was a evaluative project most recently where we went to a place called The Hub which is near Dudley 
and we went in and we tried to sort of, we evaluated the location primarily and so we saw how it was, how it was accessible etc and sort of suitability of the location. And then we just went inside and observed how things were and we spoke to staff uh, about the various facets of caring for young people who are maybe in less advantaged areas etc. And they seemed to answer very well and we covered loads of ground and it allowed us to really come together and analyse exactly what we need to target in order to develop this sort of service for the young people. As a young commissioner, I was looking into obesity in uh, young people. It was mainly focused on school. We asked the school nurses like, why they felt that young people were getting obese. The main reasons were junk food and the mobile phones and not really getting any exercise. So we uh, suggested them some uh, ideas such as make a walking school bus where people who stay locally can just walk to school rather than drive to school or get the bus to school, which would make stu uh, students forced to exercise rather than just take the easy way around. Young People's Commissioning, I've seen it not only to the benefits of the local authority and the services which we commission, I've seen it to the benefits of the young people themselves in terms of developing their confidence, their skills. Don't look at it from a linear perspective in that it's only about um, ticking a box, getting children and young people involved because it looks good on paper. I think we have to realise that there are significant benefits to children and young people being involved throughout the commissioning cycle right through to quality assurance and evaluation. You must set up and agree an action plan. Ensure that the work plan is smart and can be delivered in time and also fits the young people's availability. Involving the young commissioners in these decisions will increase the model's sustainability. Initially we had lots of interest from young people, but around sustaining their engagement was an issue. Again, because they were already engaged with lots of other activities, this wasn't exactly their priority, and they engaged at elements that they felt that they could contribute to. So there was elements that they'd miss out on. So it was very difficult then to do the catch up. So we found when the exam periods were taking place at school holidays, it was very difficult to get the young people engaged in the project. We had to reduce um, our time meetings. So they were for approximately two hours. We had to vary whether it was evenings or weekends. So it was very much the model had to be adapted to the needs of the young people that we were engaging with, but also ensuring that what we set out to do, that we achieved that. It's about training the organisations themselves, so training the health professionals in how to work with services and, and give up a bit of their power and authority in terms of the design of services. And that's quite, that's quite an ask uh, for services. They're very busy, stretched, etc. And to have to do things a different way is a real challenge for them. So I think what our model does, it's a tried and tested way of supporting organisations, very busy organisations, to actually do meaningful co-production. So the benefits of a model such as the Young Commissioners is that inevitably services are going to be more responsive to the needs of young people. And I think it's quite clear that you know people in general and particularly young people talk with their feet. If it's a service that they don't want to use, that they've had no involvement in um, and that they know nothing about, it's highly unlikely they're going to use it and therefore it's about looking at directing resources into the right things that young people need and young people want. So for example, the Integrated Youth Hub, where the young people have been involved in that, and the Young Carer Service, the service is going to be what young people want. And it isn't just about those young commissioners themselves. You know, They have a whole big peer group of friends. I suppose what, what they are is they're advocates for that service. So they're going to be getting the message out to the other young people. So fundamentally, I think you know the main benefit is that young people are going to be using these services. Thank you for taking your time to listen and learn about the Young Commissioners model. For more information, you should contact the University of East London at the address provided at the end of the film. For anyone wanting to adopt a Youth Commissioner model, I do strongly advise it because if you're commissioning children and young people services, it only makes sense to understand their need from their perspective. Otherwise, you're commissioning services that aren't being used. To summarise it, I would say it was a really positive and rewarding role because it wasn't just any job for me, it was my first job as obviously working as a youth commissioner and it's in a field that, you know, something that I had, I, I was living with diabetes, it gave me the chance to improve the services for other people, for my younger sister who's now two, so 
for me I see it a good thing because I was helping something that you know I had and other people could now use.